Good evening and welcome to Praying Through the Psalms, our nightly chance to come together as a community to pause from the busyness or maybe even the boredom of the day and to come um, again into the presence of God. Now we're very lucky today because you get two daily psalms today for the price of one. If you haven't yet had a chance to watch Michael take us through Psalm 48, which unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, couldn't be shown last night. Uh, it went out a couple of hours ago, uh, so you can still watch it on Facebook or our YouTube channel. So you can catch up after this if you haven't seen it yet, or maybe see it over the weekend. And I would encourage you uh, to do so if you can. So tonight we're going to be reading Psalm 49 together. And if you have a Bible or a Bible app on your phone, then you might want to turn to that now. So let's begin by lighting a candle and by deliberately choosing to give ourselves and this time to God. Lord, at the end of this evening, indeed at the end of this week, we choose to give ourselves and to give this time to you. As we draw near to you, we pray that you would draw near to us. We ask that you would reveal your presence to us that you'd restore your perspective for us and that you would renew in us your peace. Amen. So Psalm 49. I love that the songwriter of Psalm 49 tells us uh, in verse four, uh, that he has written this poetic song for him to sing whilst playing his harp. And as it's a very punchy psalm that lays into the rich and the folly of trusting their wealth, I picture uh, a kind of Bronze Age Bob Dylan sitting on the Jerusalem temple steps giving this one some attitude. And his song is all about the stark contrast between living a life without God and living a life with God. So first of all, life without God. Those who live without God in their lives tend to, tend to end up trusting in either wealth, as the uh, songwriter indicates in, in verse, verse 6, or, or themselves, verse 13. And this trust is characterised by a search for status. The wealthy may boast of their great riches, uh, verse 6, and use money to impress others with their possessions, verse 16. They may even uh, name lands after themselves, verse 11. They may enjoy the praise of others and count themselves blessed. They may try to use their wealth to buy off or to postpone their own death. Yet no amount of money is ever going to be enough to do that. In the end, it's all futile as wealth, as wealth gets left to others. And as uh, the message translation puts uh, verses 16 to 17, don't be impressed with those who get rich and pile up fame and fortune. They can't take it with them. What is this all worth if we decay in the grave? The songwriter asks in verse 14. By contrast, if we live a life with God, there is no need to search for status. And this is because our status is determined not by our success in accumulating wealth or possessions, uh, by reveling in what belongs to us, but in knowing to whom we belong and how precious we are to God. 
In verse 8, the singer says the ransom for a human life is costly. No payment is ever enough so that they should live on forever and not see decay. But as we read this psalm through the lens of knowing Jesus, we do know that our ransom, the costly price, has been paid through the sacrifice of Christ. And we have been redeemed. Our future is secure. We are forgiven our sin and set free from guilt. We are saved. Again, as the message translation puts verse 15, but me, God snatches me from the clutch of death. He reaches down and grabs me. But this isn't all. A life with God means we will live forever and ever and not see decay, as the songwriter seems to say in verse 9. The psalmist says, why should I fear? Fear is a natural human emotion, but through Jesus Christ, with God, we can face our fears with confidence because we are able to have complete trust in God, not only for this life, but for the life to come. Here is one of the few hints in the Old Testament of life after death. The writer is confident that God will redeem my life from the grave. He will surely take me to himself. Life with God does not end with death, but continues on into eternity. The psalmist was confident in this, even though he did not know how it was possible. The answer is revealed through Jesus' resurrection. Let's enjoy reading uh, this psalm together. Maybe you can read out loud uh, on your translation uh, at home, even if it's slightly different to the one I'm reading. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all who live in this world, both low and high, rich and poor alike. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The utterance from my heart will give understanding. I will turn my ear to a proverb. With the harp, I will expound my riddle. Why should I fear when evil days come, when wicked deceivers surround me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast of their great riches. No man can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for him. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment is ever enough that he should live on forever and not see decay. For all can see that wise men die. The foolish and the senseless alike perish and leave their wealth to others. Their tombs will remain their houses forever, their dwellings for endless generations, though they had named lands after themselves. But man, despite his riches, does not endure. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the fate of those who trust in themselves and of their followers, who approve of their sayings. Like sheep, they are destined for the grave, and death will feed on them. The upright will rule over them in the morning. Their forms will decay in the grave, far from prince, their princely mansions. But God will redeem my life from the grave. He will surely take me to himself. Do not be overawed when a man grows rich, when the splendour of his house increases, for he will take nothing with him when he dies. His splendour will not descend with him, though while he lived he counted himself blessed, and men praise you when you prosper. He will join the generation of his fathers who will never see the light of life. A man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. As we reflect on these sobering words, let's turn it to prayer. Let's marvel and give thanks again for these wonderful prophetic words fulfilled fully in Jesus, written 700 years before his human birth 
by the prophet Isaiah. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Lord Jesus, thank you that despite the costly price of humanity's ransom from the hold of sin and death, you were prepared to pay that price in your own blood on the cross. You took the punishment that we deserved on yourself so that we could have peace. Lord, as the hymn writer sings, were the whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And if that weren't enough kindness Lord, kindness, Lord, thank you for the power of your resurrection, which now lives in me. Thank you that as the psalmist sings, you will snatch me from the clutch of death and take me to yourself. We pray for all those we know and maybe love who trapped in their pursuit of comfort in this life so far, just, just don't get it who stubbornly live a life without God, without knowing these immense gifts of rescue and resurrection that would make them rich beyond their wildest dreams. Lord, we ask that tonight, this very night, you would break into their bedrooms, into their dreams, and reveal yourself and your love that they might see, hear, and turn and receive you. Amen. Let's finish by praying this prayer of blessing over our community and nation. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. So now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.